hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we've got another scale model build. Well, the countdown has been on the website for a while now, forecasting to you guys when this series would start. And today is the day. Today is part one of Toys and Joys Road Grader, pattern number 70. Now, I had an email from a viewer about this asking if I had the pattern and if I'd ever made it. And I thought, you know what? We haven't done a model build in so long that it's a great way to start off 2023. This build will only be featured on Fridays, guys, so that'll give you time to work in between the shows if you're going to follow along. But let's get started and see where this build takes us. Well, much like all of our model builds, I will be going through each piece and showing you if there's an issue or if there's a need, I will show you how to make them. So we're gonna start here on page two. Page one is strictly the cover page with the initial information. And we're going to start with a lamination. Um, we will work on this piece first. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to get a block laminating together that's going to end up being two and a half inches wide by three inches by five and a quarter. Um, I do not have stock that is two and a half inches wide, so I'm going to get two pieces of inch and a quarter thick poplar laminating together so that we can cut these, this piece when it's dry. And we will let this completely dry overnight. Once it is dry, we will joint one edge to make sure that we have a square edge to our two flat surfaces. And then we will cut it over at the table saw, bringing it down to its final dimensions according to page two on the plans. Well, until our engine block dries, there is absolutely nothing that we can do with it. So we're gonna go on and make a couple other pieces. Now, where possible, I like to use as much scrap as I can. And these are scrap pieces from older projects. Um, they will be used for these walking beams. We need two of them. Now, when we look at the plans, we can see that these are actually the beams that are going to hold our rear wheels. So because of that, um, I prefer to make these out of a much harder wood. First things first, we are gonna rip it along its length to get it to be its one inch wide. We will then cross cut it to be five and a quarter inches. From there, we are going to mark out our holes, drill them, and then by using a circle template, we're going to determine what this radius is here. And I can see here that this is a three quarter inch circle template that lines up with that radius. So that is what we're going to use um, in order to duplicate the radius on our walking beams. From there, we can just take them over to the scroll saw. We're gonna rough cut this around the edge and then clean it up at the belt sander. And a quick sanding on some sandpaper mounted on MDF will both give you a nice flat surface, take off any burrs, and it will not reduce uh, your thickness more than what you really want to because that can be a problem when sanding with these models. Now guys, truth be told, I, uh, I decided against the scroll saw. There just wasn't enough material there to even bother, so I just did it all on the sander. But for those of you with a sharp eye, you may notice that I have done the center hole at 5 16 and the two outer holes at a quarter inch. I did that because my method of mounting the wheels is different than what these plans call for. And I'll get into that once I actually mount this part with the wheels. But that caused me to see a discrepancy. As I was looking ahead in the plans, I see the axle block here. And I know that this walking beam is going to get mounted into the axle block. However, if we look at the top of the plans over here on the uh, assembly drawing, there's a hole here. This hole is to mount this entire walking beam onto your axle block, uh, most likely with a 5 16 axle pin, which I do not use. But where's the hole? 
there isn't one. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to fake it. We will end up, this looks like it's centered on both planes. So right here on our axle block, in the center of our three quarter inch thickness and in the middle of this two inch dimension, so one inch right here in the center, we will be drilling um, a hole in here. It'll probably be a stopped hole. I don't need a through axle to go all the way through three and a half inches here. So it would just be a stopped hole that will uh, mount in place on both of these sides of the axle block. So it's something to keep in mind there's a missing hole here on each side of that axle block. Coincidentally, that is also the next piece that we're going to make. With pieces like this, guys, the pattern, while it is useful, it is so much of a pain in the neck to try to mount a pattern like this to your wood that you are far better off to just take this piece of wood three quarters of an inch thick and measure and mark all of your dimensions on it. Make this shape and then cut it out. The piece of advice I will have for you here, drill your holes or your non-existing holes, drill them first. That way you are dealing with much more support here on your drill press table before you cut it away. You don't want to be teetering on this one part here. So drill your holes first. Now, in order to get these cutouts, um, what I've done after marking them is I've taken this over to the table saw, I've raised my blade to half an inch, and using my miter fence and clamping the board to the miter fence, I'm able to cut these four cuts. That will give you a nice clean shoulder here for your axle block for your other pieces to mount to. But we need now to get these pieces here out of here fairly simple piece. I'm only going to use the scroll saw. So what you can do if you don't have a scroll saw, you can use a band saw. You can even use a hand saw. But I'm going to get this cut with the scroll saw and then using some sandpaper attached to MDF, I'll just sand this gently to take out any wavers in the straight line. And we should end up with a pretty perfect piece. And there you go. So that would be our axle block. The base is a pretty straightforward piece. It's three quarters of an inch thick. You can see that here on the end view. It is eight and a half inches long, three inches wide. The only thing that's a little odd about it is this slot. Now that slot will eventually um, house another piece. And we can see here that slot is three quarters of an inch by two inches long. So I have cut our stock to its final dimension. And again, this is so much easier just to draw it out. And if you are using an Incra T rule with your uh, model, this takes seconds. So for this, it's just a simple cut over at the scroll saw, again, using our MDF with our sandpaper as a file to kind of get in there and take away any imperfections that may happen while we're scrolling it. And that would be it for that piece, other than to get rid of our pencil marks. And we can give the surface of this um, a light sanding using our sandpaper on our MDF. Okay, now that that piece is done, we can move on to our engine block. And this was our laminated piece. I have cut it down to its final dimensions according to the plans. There is a lot of drilling to be done on this. So what I would suggest, and it is kind of what I'm in the habit of doing, is there are no dimensions for these holes here anywhere on this um, layout. The only dimensions is the hole's diameter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark up my drawing. Guys, don't be afraid to place marks and measurements on your drawings. They're yours. Um, it will only help you. And then if you accidentally make a mistake on this engine block and drill something incorrectly, et cetera, et cetera, or maybe you drop it and damage it uh, un unrepairably, then you have to make it again. It will avoid you having to measure this all out. So I'm gonna take some time and mark all of these out as far as their layouts. And then I will do the layout here on our engine block piece. 
Now, before we drill our holes, I'm going to give you some advice. And this goes a long way to making a good model a great model. This is our top layout. And if we look at our base and engine assembly drawing, we can see right here that the holes that we're drilling are for handles on the top. So this is what I'm gonna suggest. Do not center punch these and just drill them over at the drill press. Use your drill press fence to make sure that these holes get drilled the exact same distance from the edge because that way, even if you're a little bit off, your railing will still be parallel to the sides of the body of your model. If you're just the tiniest little bit off, if you're drilling without the fence, I'm telling you that railing on this small scale, even if it's 1 64th out of whack, will stick out like a sore thumb. So use your fence to drill these and get them perfectly aligned. Same thing goes with these side rails. These ones here have to be 3 8 of an inch from this end because these railings are upright. Use your fence to make them identical and the same goes with these ones. So get all of your holes drilled um, to the depths that are listed on the plans and then when you get that done we can move on to the next piece on page two. Now with all the holes drilled in our main engine block you will note that the smaller 332nd diameter holes are for these top grab handles and the side grab bars. Um, those are details, guys, that do not get added until the end because they really hinder clamping. That is the problem. Uh, you cannot put any kind of pressure on them. And in fact, even just handling the model while you're building it, you can break those off and it can get very frustrating. So leave those handles to one of the very last details that you're going to add to the model. So with that being done, now I'm not going to lie to you, I intend to add some laser engraving to the side of this. Maybe uh, the Caterpillar logo or something like that, just to give it a little more authenticity and because I can. So if you want to do something like that, by all means, don't be afraid to add embellishments to your model. So with that being said now, why don't we start working on the grill, which will be the back end of our engine block. Well, the grill looks like a complicated piece, but really, as long as you take your time, it's not that bad. And what I have here is an off cut, the end cut of our laminated block, and I have cut it down to our final dimensions of the grill without the angle. And I've made it two and seven eighths of an inch high. And basically I have made it so that it is two and a quarter of an inch wide. Our original block was two and a half, but in order to keep this seam that's here symmetrical, I took one eighth of an inch off of each side. Now I did all this at the table saw using push blocks and got our final block here. So what we're going to do now here at this uneven joint, I'm going to take it over. I have measured the angle of this grill to be seven degrees. So using clamps and um, my miter fence, I'm gonna set it at seven degrees and cut the glue joint end off of our laminated block. Well, we know that the top dimension of our grill has to be 3 eighths of an inch. It's written right on the plans. So I have placed a mark here at 3 eighths of an inch and I have set my fence so that it is actually the off cut that we're saving, not the part that is in here between the blade and the fence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my gripper and we're going to run this through to cut our grill assembly off of our main block. And there we go. That is the hardest part of the grill made. And the best part about this is that because it was made from the same stock as what we made our original engine block, it's going to match. It's going to look like it belongs um, and the grain is going to line up and our seam is going to line up, which is going to go a long way to making this a better looking model. 
So with that grill now, the main section done, I'm going to follow through on the plans right over here for part B, part A, and part C. We will cut them at the table saw, cut them to length as per the drawing, and then I'll show you how to assemble them here on the main part of our grill. Well, there is a general rule of thumb that I go by when making these models or with anything in the shop, really. And that is, if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Trust your instincts. So cutting these smaller pieces on the table saw, even with a miter fence, I didn't feel good about it. That is way too close to the blade for me. There's no way to clamp these to get my fingers out of the way. So it's a miter box and a razor saw for me. We'll get them all cut up. It may take longer, a little more tedious, but you know what, I'll have all 10 digits at the end of it and be able to continue my model and I won't have to sand the blood out of it. Well, this is our first glue up of the model. So I'm gonna say this once, the key to a successful glue up any time during a model build is preparation. You want everything with you and set up. So I have a straight edge here lined up to be able to line up this side here because that's where we're gonna start and gluing our pieces up. I have a one, two, three block clamped here. That will give us a square edge that will help us to line up our piece to the bottom and at the top. As well, we have cotton swabs and water for cleanup of any squeeze out. We have our glue ready to go. We have right beside our assembly area, we have our sandpaper glued to our three quarter inch MDF because we're gonna have to tune a couple of these pieces and sand them as we go. So the first thing we want to do is, I've already sanded this piece here, which is our left piece. Um, this piece here will be part C that you made two of. Now, you want to make sure that this sloped surface here is sanded as much as you want it to be because after this, you're not gonna get another chance. So the first thing you want to do to put this piece together is run a very thin, tiny little bead of glue here along that part C. We're gonna gently place it in the corner, lining it up against our straight edge and our one, two, three block and we will press that in place. Now using this yellow wood glue, it does not take long for this to set. So you do not have a lot of working time. And there we go, that piece is now set there. Looks great, it's nice and flush along here. It looks like it's just the way it should be. But we're gonna give that a minute to set up and then we can glue in the next piece. So you wanna get your part B, that is your 3 8 wide piece. The first thing you wanna do is a light sanding on both surfaces just to make sure that it's not got any um, burrs from cutting it at that miter box. So just a light sanding, blow the dust off, and we're going to turn this around because it's imperative that we allow this to line up. We already know that this one's lined up, but we need this one lined up at the top to be square. So same as we did before, ah, see right there, a little burr. You gotta be careful of that because once you glue it down, you're not gonna get those burrs off again. All right, that looks good. So a little bead of glue, Again, you don't need a lot, guys. And we will put this in place here, tight up against our side piece and tight up against our straight edge. And we will hold that in place for just a couple seconds. We're watching for squeeze out here. If there is any, you wanna get in there right away and clean it up. Okay, now, there is no rush at this point we leave this alone. Don't do any more. Let this fully cure, let this set up. Well, while I was waiting, I sanded all of these pieces here, which would be your part A's. And they all get spaced at 1 8th of an inch apart from each other. So I have a 1 8th inch spacer block or setup block. I'm going to place it just like that. And what we're going to do, I'm gonna apply a little bit of glue and we will push this up against our 1 8 block and up against our side piece here and then let that dry kind of thing. 
You don't have to allow it to completely set up, but it does allow for a more successful glue up, only due to the fact that once you get this set in here, you will be removing this and applying pressure against that piece. If it's not fully set up, when you apply pressure gluing the next one in, you could shift it and that is a disaster. So make sure that you let these dry. So this is going to be a very time consuming process. Um, I'm not gonna film it all, but you know the method now, spacer, then one of these pieces, let it dry, spacer, one of these pieces, and you continue on all the way down to the bottom. Um, take your time, guys. If you don't have setup blocks, you can use a 1 8 inch thick piece of, of material. Just cut it at the table saw. Just be sure you don't glue it in place, that's all. Well, truth be told, not all of my pieces line up as perfectly as I would like. So, again, using an MDF with a little bit of sandpaper, I'm just letting it ride on this shoulder here, and we're going to even these all out. They're not out by much, but they're just enough that you can really see it. Okay, and that lines up really well there now. That looks great. Okay, and the other issue I had was that this bottom one here actually was too long, it was too wide. So something went amiss here at some point in time. So I'm just gonna use the sandpaper here and just gentle movements. You don't need a lot of pressure. And we will even this out with the bottom of our grill. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now we will do the same thing that we did in the first place with lining this up in the corner. We will place our last side piece here, get it in line and glue it in place and let it completely set up. And once you get that sanded, you'll have your grill. Doesn't that look great? And unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for this week, guys. Um, honestly, my original intention for this build was to try to incorporate one page of the prints per episode. But unfortunately, there are some pages that take a little extra, extra explanation. And of course, there's extra things in episode one of the series, such as uh, how to sand and gluing techniques and that sort of thing that take up a little extra time. So who knows, further on down through the build, we may get it down to one page per episode. But just like always on this show, guys, I'm never in a hurry. It takes what it takes. And as long as you guys are getting the benefit of how to make the pieces and how to make the model and how to be happy with what you're making, then that's what is important to me when it comes to producing a show. Guys, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. You click that bell and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. This one so far has been a lot of fun. It doesn't look like much yet, but I know it's going to get there. I hope you've enjoyed today's content, guys. I hope you're going to get the plans. You're going to try this for yourself and join along in this build. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.